Sean, what's up? Greetings, Edgerenka. Greetings, viewers. Uh, Cromwell, let's look at the biggest winners and losers of falling oil prices on the global market. But we're going to start right here at home because we are aware of the fact that uh, oil prices on the global market has fallen from around $114 US to just around 50% of that um, between June and January, early January 2015. And uh, locally, we've had Bishop Klein, a businessman, Bishop John Klein, and someone who speaks out on issues that he's concerned about. And he says that he's not satisfied with the rate being charged by the BVI Electricity Corporation in terms of the fuel surcharge rate. And he also thinks that the, the price of fuel at the pump should be much lower. We have an, a short audio clip that we took from ZBVI Radio. Let's hear him. We are still paying over three dollars and close to four dollars for a gallon of gas in the BVI in the United States. It's about a dollar ninety to a, to two dollars, depending on the grade. Um, even uh, electricity have. Uh, in my estimation, have not come down with the fuel surcharge as much as it could have. We started the year, um, the end of the year, with surcharge at about 17 cent fuel surcharge. It, it has come down to about 11 cents, uh, which is a reduction of six cents. And I and I think that when prices go up on the open market. They are quick to raise prices, but when prices fall, they are very slow to react to the changes of, of the decrease in pricing. And I think this needs to be addressed. I think it's unfair to the consumer. Unfair to the customer, Bishop John Klein says. But we have an opposing view coming from the director at the BVI Electricity Corporation, the BVIC, Mr. Leroy Abraham. He was chatting right here with you. Uh, Edrenka last week and he said that they have made a significant reduction in that uh, fuel surcharge rate down to nine cents at, the, at this point. Let's hear him as he explains. They've, uh, they've decreased approximately 50 percent. Naturally th there's a different correlation with regards to the reduction in oil and the cost of fuel. Um, oil have dropped approximately 50 percent, yes. But in terms of the price of fuel, that has dropped only approximately forty percent. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I know and we've seen and we've seen that. Sorry to cut you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. And we've seen that um, we've seen that on the bills. So that reflected in is reflected bills. on the fuel right. variation surcharge because we started it last year. This time, um, fuel variation surcharge was around sixteen, seventeen cents, and um, as of this month, the fuel variation surcharge is nine cents. So we've seen, as mm -hmm. I say, the corresponding reduction. Yeah, with the, yeah, it's approximately fifty percent. I was going yeah. to add, I was going to set up because I know you, you live a very comfortable life, um, Cromwell. So you don't go actually go and pay your own bills. But if you did go and pay your own bills, you would see <laughs> 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 you would have seen that you know the, yeah. the, the fuel surcharge has actually reduced quite significantly. An interesting point of view, um, a, a diversion from the the the, um, the issue of oil prices. Um, I understand you're living a comfortable life. But to move on, to stay on topic, $115 um, last year to now $50 per barrel is really a significant drop. And you, you want to empathize with the, um, with the bishop when he says that prices should be lower. And also you get the sense that the BVIEC, they know what they're saying. They're saying that they have made a significant re uh, reduction. Well, it's, uh, certainly, Sean, the, it seems as though, according to the director, the managing director that the BVIEC has made a significant reduction, um, about um, 40 or 50 percent in the fuel surcharge, and certainly reflected on my bill. So I think. So you, you've seen this. Reduction. I have seen. The I've definitely seen the reduction, and also I've seen a reduction at the pumps. Uh, I remember paying as, as much as four dollars and sixty cents for a gallon of gas uh, a few months ago. And I think the last time I paid it was about three dollars and forty something cents. I can't remember exactly, but certainly it's coming at least a dollar, which is which is good because normally it doesn't come down at all. And so I think we should be glad. I mean, I that the, the that fall it is came down. Yeah. In terms so, of the, the, the global price. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was uh, the other night. I filled up the truck and I got a, a bill of fifty nine dollars. It was empty, and I said, well, it must not have been empty. And then I realized the. Uh, the cost was uh, was a lot uh, lower 
Because normally it's $76 yeah, to yeah. fill it up. So like I could, I'm realizing at the pumps a significant reduction. So already we are seeing mm -hmm. that you are a big, one of the big winners of the yeah, falling de oil prices. Definitely. I, I consider myself one of the big winners of the falling oil So BVI consumers are, are some of the biggest winners. But in terms of the biggest losers, who would you? I, I know you're very much a, a, a versed on global matters. Who do you think would be some of the, the, uh, the biggest losers mm -hmm with this falling uh, in oil prices. Well, uh, and it's likely to go even lower, we are, we are told. Of course, according to the, the news, or uh, the global news, uh, the, the oil producing countries are certainly the, bigger, the biggest losers. Uh, Russia's economy is basically in shambles by all accounts as a result of the fall in oil prices. Venezuela yes. uh, is having significant uh, challenges, meaning it's uh, its national debt and, and all the other social obligations that it's signed on to. So I, I would say uh, the oil producing countries are the, 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 the big losers. What my concerns, however, Sean, is that we don't allow the, the seeming uh, low price of oil to deter us from pursuing alternative sources of energy. Because that, that's what happens. You, you start out to pursue alternative source of energy and then the prices fall and you say well the price of oil gone down and so now it's cheaper to, to, to burn fossil fuel than to uh, seek alternative sources of energy and then you get trapped in that and in a few months the oil prices go back up again and then you start pursuing uh, uh, f uh, alternative source of energy again so I'm, I'm hoping that we will continue to pursue alternative source of energy and and, and try to uh, get a permanent uh, level uh, price in, in terms of energy production so that our economy could um, be, um, perform in a more stable way. The, the market, at least research coming out from the, what's happening as a result of the falling oil prices, uh, shows that coming out of China, you are able to access uh, equipment to generate uh, renewable source of energy much cheaper than at least 10, 15 years ago. Um, for, for example, they're saying that by at least 80%, uh, you can purchase e equipment out of China for, for solar power. You can, you can actually uh, buy these things in larger amounts, whereas some years ago that was much, much more difficult. But on the side of Venezuela, something that we are observing, the cost of, uh, sorry, the, the reduction in the uh, net imp or net foreign direct in, uh, imports coming in, coming in for Venezuela, which relies heavily on fuel, um, is affecting its economy significantly in terms of supplying or maintaining its, uh, its social programs. And many people are wondering what's going to happen to the Venezuelan, Venezuelan economy. Already they are selling uh, debt owed through Petrocarib to foreign banks and, and institutions so that Caribbean countries and other Central American countries who are uh, who owe Venezuela under the Petrocarib agreement can now or will now have to re revolt or pay these international institutions and not necessarily pay their debt back to Venezuela. And that again shows that Caribbean countries could be some of the biggest losers from that end. But at the same time, what, should Petrocarib go under, there are other alternatives which would uh, for lower uh, fuel prices. And at the same time, as we said, being able to buy equipment and other things coming out from China much cheaper still allows them to access uh, renewable sources of energy. Well, I hope they take advantage of uh, the China put, uh, lower cost of of the solar panels and other equipment to produce alternative so alternative sources of energy and don't get trapped in the, the low oil, oil pr price market. Uh, I, I I basically think it's a gimmick. It, you know, you have the 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 international uh, community, uh, Europe, North America. The, the big economies uh, trying their best to affect, uh, have a negative impact on the countries that uh, have a more social conscience. I don't understand why you say it's and, a gimmick. It's, a, it's, it's the law of supply and demand. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I think um, they, uh, they manipulate the oil prices to, 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 to ruin certain economies. And but Russia is a member of and OPEC. O Venezuela is an OPEC member. Well, and, so and, and, they are, and they are members of, of BRIC. That, I think, is a major uh, threat to, uh, to the, the, the European and North American economy. So I think there's some geop uh, geopolitics going on there. And um, we're going to see how it's going to play out in the next, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the months ahead. Right, but uh, excellent, 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 yeah, excellent uh, report uh, there, Sean.